Some 20 years after the SS Titanic of Britain's White Star Line sank in 1912, the chairman of the rival Cunard Line approached King George V. Intending to name Cunard's planned superliner the Victoria, the executive asked permission to name the ship after England's greatest queen. The king replied, why, my wife Mary would be delighted. And so the royal consort went north to christen and launch the new Queen Mary. I am happy to name this ship the Queen Mary. thousand tons, more than a thousand feet long, and carrying 2,100 passengers, the Great Queen broke the transatlantic speed record to New York, then lost it to France's SS Normandie, then got it back. Celebrities filled the first-class cabins, but when war broke out in 1939, the Queen Mary was marooned in New York alongside the Normandie and in 1940, the new Queen Elizabeth. The Queen Mary raced to Australia for conversion to a troop ship, painted Battleship Grey. Through the war, she transported to Europe up to 16,000 closely packed American soldiers at a time, a full army division. Winston Churchill, sailing on the ship to several meetings with President Roosevelt, later said the two queens had shortened the war by a year. With the war's end, the Queens made profits for 22 years with weekly express service between New York and Southampton. But in 1958, transatlantic jets reaching Europe in six hours put the four-day sea voyages to an end. The Queen Mary, narrowly avoiding the scrap heap, went to ground in Long Beach. She was turned into a museum, a 322-room hotel, and an attraction touting tales of ghosts aboard the old liner. Irma and I, single ski club members invited to the annual gala of the Los Angeles Council of Snow and Sports Clubs, arrive on board and start looking around the vast ship for the party. On the way, we encounter the traditional and the modern. We observe guests checking in at the Queen Mary Hotel. We pass through a hallway of hotel rooms, missing the haunted cabin B340, where an eight-year-old girl reportedly was murdered. On this Saturday night, we encounter two main types of visitors, banqueting marines in their dress blues and brides in their white finery. The former first-class grand salon, divided now into two banquet spaces, hosts a giant wedding bash amid the Art Deco surroundings. From bow to stern we roam, seeing the ship's bell, Long Beach Harbor, and illusions that the Queen Mary is underway, with her radar scanning the horizon again. At last we reach the party, with its silent auction, its raffle, its reception, its dancing, and its annual awards. is the first one. Katherine Singer from Long Beach. Are you here? Apparently not. Well, it's two people. Two people. Rental and cross-country lift ticket at Mammoth. Jessica Freeman. Magically how that worked out. So for a hundred dollars to end. I actually found
found out that I had a competitive side. <laughs> I would never have had that experience without the Singles Keep Up, which it was just great. Thank you. Hail the King and Queen.